this is the power hose and the wire is connected to the generator and this is a uh, electric hose. Can you point us some points of some hindrance that uh, we the commerce department students have or the institutions should change, take up some change or the staffs or anything? I mean, I don't believe in the concept of late bloomers in, in the true sense. I would rather say that blooming at the right time only. I have the honor to escort you to the other room. Thank you, sir. Mr. R.K. Vikramdi, 
and I'm an account officer for the Provin and Panchayat Panch Iraj Plano Manipur. My due respect to Sri Stingley Kashin as the PO Sinati, respected father director of the college, vice principal father Sinati and assistant Cecilia, assistant professors of the college, postponents of the college, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to each one of you. At the outset, a comfortable welcome once again to each one of you to the Fifth Commerce Festival 2023, dated February 23rd to February 24th, 2023, with a 10 paradigm shift. As I stand here this morning on this lecture, while welcoming our guest to the inaugural program, we would like to acknowledge on behalf of the college to our esteemed. Or parts of the state 
even including students from outside the states are here. And it's a, it's a great feeling that the fact that students from other states are also coming here itself shows how popular and how good an educational establishment this Tonton School College Marathi is adds up to the management and to the college. Well, the theme of this uh, Commerce Fest, the paradigm shift, I, I would presume that this paradigm shift relates to the, the subject of course, commerce. But I am reminded of my own journey as a commerce student. In my school, in the school that uh, where I studied, uh, boarding school, I did my after my tenth rather, uh, I chose commerce, and so many ambitious things were in my mind. But I thought uh, I'll join commerce and be the business line. It's another matter that I became a police officer later on. <laughs> well, I took up commerce right after my death because uh, in my boarding school of those days, most of my friends, my circle of friends, and students in the school were from business family background. And that really influenced me because every time we meet and talk, it was about stocks, shares, investments, or uh, doing well in some corporate firm, or running a business by one person, or a family business. So many of my friends were from the business family background, and that itself was very influencing on me. And that's why I took up commerce. I said, I must also try to become like that. So with all this influencing background, I entered college. I did my college from Sri Ram College of Commerce in Delhi University. I think it's, it's one of the most uh, prestigious uh, commerce college in the country. Then I graduated in BCom Honors. At that point of time, while I was doing my graduation, I had a mind to do either MBA or Charter Accountant, like, like most commerce graduates. And like I said, it's another matter, perhaps another story that I turned around and appeared for the civil service. And for, for that reason was because it was my parents' insistence that I write a civil service exam. That was the end of my commerce journey. So, now this taught me one thing, that our environment really influences us. In my school, the environment was of uh, with friends, in circle of friends and others talking about business. So that was really influencing me. Then, at home, again, it was a parental uh, pressure. You write civil service, you appear for civil service, you do this, you do that, government office for this, that. So that was another influence. So we have external influence and internal influence also. So our environment plays a big role in the career that we choose. Take, for example, a doctor's family will invariably have a son or a daughter pursuing medical, the same with engineer or a royal's family or a teacher's family. So these are what I would call home environment. Now I forgot to mention that I mean my my parental background is very very humble. It's not that they were civil servant, but they had seen so many government uh, officers, IAS, IPS, and others. So they were influenced by that act by default influenced me on that. <clears throat> the other external environment that I would mention is that a student brought up in a kind of disturbed environment like ours will have uh, 
many interested in uniform service, perhaps because they see certain authority, certain power associated with that. Likewise, a young mind growing up in a commercially active state, say like Mumbai, that kind of environment would influence that student or the person to, you know, like offer business. Seeing the success of a business establishment, he would definitely offer that. Now these are what, what I would call the conventional type of influences that uh, kind of affect us in many ways. Now the good question is how to break away from all this. Uh, this is where career counseling, easy availability of educational facilities to offer you know, clients or career which are important for many of you. And indeed very happy that Bosco College has now introduced Commerce Subject since 2001 I'm told and has provided the impetus of the right environment to guide the students interested in Commerce stream. I see a lot of potential, especially amongst the tribal community in the state, that if we focus on knowing more about business, see we already have the land, the climate and the educational facilities. All we need to do is hone and tap the talents to make business booming in the hills as well. This will make us much more productive and painfully exploit our resources to our advantage. So we need to kind of change our attitude from relying on government services to become to becoming business entrepreneurs. I'll just give an example. If you really, I don't know if some of you have come to Meghalaya. If you look at the state of Meghalaya, there are so many beautiful places. So they tap that potential, they harness that, and fully exploit their tourism potential. Even till today, we are so much lagging behind in the potential that we have in the state. But if you, any of you go to Meghalaya, the first thing that you say is, I'll go and visit Chera Country, I'll go and visit uh, Elephant's Fall, like that. So those are the places that one would like to visit. But when you go and visit those places, it's not free. The moment you park your vehicle, they charge you. The moment you carry a plaza for a camera, they say, sir, camera charge for that. That's business. Very sensible business. So they charge for parking, they charge you for clicking photos. They make good business out of the, uh, you know, the potential that they have. That is tourism. Thank you, Spotlight Movers. To end the inner growth program, I request our esteemed guests to kindly stand on your feet and join us to college anthem.
department. <laughs> Very small. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The next is uh, occupied by the Department of English. Next, Matt. These are like our achievements that since 2016 the ring holders and all that. 2017, 18, 19, and like that. Except for number one and eight, rest are from yeah, yeah, from all college students. But it's, yeah. a, it's a reflection of good teaching from yeah. all of you. Yeah. Yeah. And really? this this year we got three ring holders in oh, first like that. All <laughs> Accounting, mm -hmm. accounting management, like that. <laughs> we make it like a filter, and then we just design like power, and just we just design it like this. And this one, we, we make it with our paper, and then like. Like this. First, we put the we put the pipe, and then we fix with the battery with a wire, and then when in, especially in the evening when we light up like this, when we make it light now, these flowers become more colorful and more bright and more attractive. And so we make we make flower with our paper and fabric. We paint the with fabric the color. And this one, this one is uh, like a building we make it all with uh, cartoon box the power one that for egg and then we make it in a, into a attractive building blocks this one we make it to like we can we can put here uh, importance like pen or pencil or anything which we can keep and then this one this uh this one is like how we can minimize uh, the area and we can use the environment so tell us about all these things <laughs> I just want to really uh, say that I really appreciate those, uh, you know, the painting, the sketching, the slogans, and the waste, uh, uh, best out of the waste competition. In fact, uh, when I was a student, uh, I was also a painter. I love sketching, so I was very impressed with some of the sketching here also. You see, not a lot, many of you must be thinking, why I actually joined the police service instead of 
continue with my uh, you know, line of commerce profession. Uh, I've already told you the influences that uh, was taking place in, within my family also. The other truth was that, which I did say out there, was that <coughs> I always like to take things as a challenge. I know that it was so much out of the way from commerce to suddenly uh, right civil service. And mind you, mind you, even though I did my PCOM honors, even though I did my MCOM, when I changed my subject for the civil service, I changed my subject actually. I mean, from giving up entirely the commerce side and switching to, I took up two optional subjects. Those days there were two optional subjects. Now I don't know. Public administration and anthropology. It was a totally different subject. Now that was because in my college, some of the senior students who were also appearing for civil service. Mm -hmm. So you know, during our interaction, they told me that uh, it is much better to opt for other subjects rather than commerce because at that point of time, uh, to collect various documents and related uh, articles and subjects, matters in commerce was uh, it's, it was quite a task because civil service when you appear for civil service, the the number of things that you have to collect in terms of articles, in terms of books, in terms of so many documents, it is amazing. And commerce, even though we had the best of commerce library, Sri Ram College Commerce being very reputed also. But my seniors, and they were good students also, they said it's better to opt for other subjects. That's why I opted for other subjects. Believe me, that itself was quite a challenge. I know I like adventure, I like traveling, I like going places. And some of the things that I post on YouTube are also not because I wanted to, but because I've been to places where people haven't been. I wanted people to know and see, and also keep on record that these are the things, these are the places where like you can actually go and see. I've gone to some of the most interior border villages. I find it very adventurous. I go there, interact with people. You come to realize the problems that they face also, the life that they lead also. Knowing that, Exposing that and telling the people that these are the things that actually you should really, when you look at it, you feel much more happier that at least I'm better off in some ways, I'm here in a better place where there's communication, there's this, there's that, so many things. And to lead a happy life, and there's no exact formula, but the, the thing that you should always follow is if you do things with honesty also, you will never feel the guilt or the burden inside you. When those things are there, nah, you will never feel happy. You will always be a kind of worried. You will be filled with tension, anxiety. So even if, suppose you are doing a particular job, be honest in it. Work hard. You don't have to take some shortcut to do something later on where you'll be found out and like, you can be thrown out of your job also. So these are some of the things that, I mean, you have to keep in mind to make yourself happy, contented. I think contented is also one of the most important things. You should be contented. If you're too ambitious, you become greedy. It's all there in the Bible, actually. If you, if you, if you all read the Bible, I mean, I, uh, whenever I have time also, I always read the Bible in the early in the morning. <clears throat> it gives me a kind of uh, sense of uh, peace and uh, contentment. It never teaches you to be greedy at all. And these are life's lessons. Hello, sir. Actually, uh, to be honest, most of the uh, questions that I had or doubts I had, it's already been cleared, but I still like to ask some question or to enlighten us. So I would like to ask, like, can you point us some points of some hindrance that uh, we the commerce department students have or the institutions should change, take up some change, or the staffs, or anything? Like, as I have been the, uh, from commerce background, I hope you quite have the experience of the staffs, or the classmates, and the institutions, so 
Would you please enlighten us about like if there is any change to be made? Thank you, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, it's a very good question also, but that was what the theme of this festival is about, paradigm shift. There's this tradition of teaching farmers uh, in a very tough way. <laughs> we need to change that. I mean, uh, uh, Ojan Shamsundar is also here. I would like to request, uh, I mean, uh, Rishio is also here. I mean, we have to make the students understand farmers in a much easier way. And for that, you have to break it down into pieces. And what you're all doing here also, this display of uh, waste management and sketching and uh, uh, the slogans, these are part of the activities of farmers. So, uh, of course, see, I've not studied here, so I don't know what is the, the weakness here, but the way I see it, I think definitely the college is going the right in the right direction. When the theme itself is paradigm shift, it shows that we have to change our approach, the fundamental approach of how the traditional way of teaching commerce is and how it should be thought in a different way. Somebody should actually tell us, like I have mentioned in this piece, that commerce is all about the activities that we actually do in every day of our lives also. It affects us in every day. The moment you have money, the moment you spend and buy and say that if you have 100 rupees and spend 50 rupees, you know that you have 50 rupees. But how long will that last? Suppose I'm your father. I give you for your monthly uh, pocket money this many. You should know how to manage it. That, that itself is a commercial activity. Now, when, I mean, a professor or a teacher should teach that way, that this is how business or how the commercial activity starts. And from here you move this way. From here you calculate this way. You have to make things much simpler. Once you make it simpler, then the students will also understand. Uh, hello, sir. My question is, in this generation, what is your point of view in the commerce field? The advantages to the learners as compared to your past? Thank you, sir. Being in the commerce line today is that uh, you are exposed to a lot of viable options that you can take up from being uh, an entrepreneur or for, uh, suppose you want to work in a corporate uh, firms also, you know that this many firms are there, this particular one is doing well, or I can even go abroad and start a certain business in trade, commerce, and export and import, like that also. And you even have the advantage of actually analyzing the background of those firms and companies that you want to work. Some may be fake, some may be actually giving a, a larger picture of themselves than the actual is. You have the advantage of analyzing <coughs> these things also. So you have a big advantage now. Holding a respectable and noble positions, how would you define success and what are your objectives to success? Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I, I used to wonder about this also. <laughs> I, I used to wonder to myself also whether I, whether I, I should consider myself a successful person or not. But uh, yes. I think uh, in the first place, I mean, from my point of view, the fact that uh, I got through the civil service, I felt that I was a success. Second thing was that I came to realize that that was just the first part. Clearing the exam was for the first part, but that itself I counted as my uh, successful story uh, in, I mean, along, the, along my life's uh, career and journey. So, true success will only come when after you work for years in the service or in the line, or I mean, if you're in the business line, in the business line that you are in, that through that experience, the, the experience that you have along the journey, and the way you deal with people, 
and the way, if you're in business line, the way your business has grown. Okay, and if you're in the service, uh, along the journey of your uh, government service, what are the things that you have done which you feel proud of? Because our, as a government servant, ours is people oriented. We are serving the, the we are common servant serving the, the public. So to that extent, whether I have done my part or not, that can only come about when you analyze yourself. Personally, I feel that I have given my best, sometimes to the extent of even sacrificing my own comfort and family also in serving the people and the government and always giving my best. And the extent of support that I get from the public and from my own officers and men, I thought that is what success should be. Hi, sir. Good morning once again. Uh, so uh, there are many people, including myself, uh, who have doubt or like uh, what we say, that, like late bloomers who came to realize that commerce is not their subject or like when they think that oh, it's my parents who were forcing me to take up commerce or I, I'm better in this subject, I should have opted for this subject or that subject. So uh, what will be your message to these people? You see, of course, uh, when you choose your uh, subjects, that is where I pointed out during my speech that career counseling is actually very required. So th that, that counseling part is the part wherein the faculty has a big role. When, when I was in my class, then as soon as the results came out, when I was about to choose that, some of my teachers uh, you know, in the school, they called us and counseled us that this is this kind of subject. It will go this way. You have this option, you have that option. So many things they tell us. Now, our parents are not always the best guide for us I mean, in, in this kind of choosing subjects because some of us from a poor family where our parents are not necessarily graduates but barely 10 plus or maybe not even well educated. So to that extent, they may, they may not be the right people to guide us in choosing the subjects. The right people to guide you in choosing the subjects are your teachers. Because from your formative years, you are in the school, then you are in college. They have guided you, they have molded you, they know you very well, they know your strength and weaknesses much more than your parents do. So at any point of time, if you feel that you have chosen the wrong subject, uh, you can again consult your teachers. You can always shift your subject also. It's, you know, you, there, there's nothing known as it's too late. Uh, you are not a late bloomer. You're blooming at the right time because that is what God has chosen for you. That this is the time that you should be able to, uh, you know, like do well. Some gets it early. Some gets it somewhere in between. Somewhere some gets it late. But there's, no, I mean, I don't believe in the concept of late bloomers in, in the true sense. I would rather say that blooming at the right time only. So the right time is always not necessarily when you are young. It can be when uh, somewhere like a realization dawned into you and that could be maybe you are already a graduate also. So choosing subjects that you want is always very, very, very important. And I'm sure even in this college also, you would have your teaching faculty guiding you also. So when you feel that the subjects that you are, by virtue of being, uh, you know, like being told by your parents to take this, because maybe, you know, I, I don't know, in, in our tribal society, many times our parents are telling us, take up science, you may not be good in science, take up science. You become a doctor, you become an engineer, not realizing that what your son or daughter is capable of. Some will say, take up arts line. You will do this, you will do that, but not realizing what it will lead to also. This is very, very important. That's where, like, I mean, uh, our teachers' rule becomes very important. They are better guide for us. 
And colleges like Don Bosco College is, is a premier institute where like, you have some of the best teachers who are sensible, who will guide you also. At any point of time, if you feel that you have chosen the wrong subject uh, for your profession or for your future career, uh, you can always think over, you can always shift to another subject also. You know, when I was a student at the university, I know some of my friends who dropped out after second year also. Say, I don't think this is my line. I will shift to another subject. They take that decision. It's a very courageous decision. Maybe uh, because of that, a year or two you will be behind your friends. But it doesn't matter. So long as you feel that you're taking the right step. It's never too late. This is what I would like to say. According to my age, of course, I have to keep in mind that. So live life to the fullest, enjoy, and always take up the challenges that life gives you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for this uh, wonderful opportunity where our students have uh, this time to interact with you. Thank you, and all the best for the Commerce Fest, and God the best. So we'll see you all. A good day has come to an end. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure meeting all of you.